I am the Pope in question. My name is uh, May Lynn, Reverend May Lynn. I am the founder of the Church of Ed Wood, which is an actual thing worth a Google. It is episode 466 of the podcast, and you know what that means. That means that we have done 465 podcasts leading up to this one. Why would we lie about that? What type of a podcast would lie about how many episodes that they've done? Nope. And besides, you're not going to check. So we'll just uh, take it as word that we have done 465 podcast episodes leading up to this one. Why would we change that? That'd be so bizarre and meta. So uh, anyway, buddy. It has been a number of weeks since we have done the show. And so what better way for us to catch up on everything that's been going on than by once again bringing back everyone's favorite podcast segment. Yes, it's time once again for TBWNPSBTYBRSLDT. I know that's not what we usually call it. We call it Jeff. AKA the Betty White Memorial Podcast segment brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends download today. But the kids, Bunny, the kids, they like it when you use initials. Acronyms. Yeah. They like that. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. So, and, and that evil satanic dungeons and dragons. I was watching one of those uh, 80s uh, uh, anti dungeons and dragons videos, and they're in, on YouTube recently, and they're talking about how Dungeons and Dragons is a portal into the occult, and and the preacher says that uh, Dungeons and Dragons is a portal into the occult, just like. Uh, just like E.T. And it's like, what the fuck did E.T. do? How in the world did you just bring E.T. into this? I know. I'm so confused. E.T. didn't do a thing. Although although the, the 1980s film E.T. is why I've done drugs and trans. I oh. will admit that. I love how Elliot feeds the alien Reese's pieces. I'm going to go suck dick now. That is literally how it happened. Which was weird because I was like eight, but that's how it happened. Boom. E.T. made me gay. Yeah, why would they lie? Uh... But the kids, Bunny, the kids love it when you use the initials. Kentucky Fried Chicken is KFC. McDonald's is... Mm. No, they've shortened it even more than McD's. Now it's just... Mm. And of course, you know what the kids call uh, uh, Long John Silver's? Nothing, because they don't go there. Fucking Long John Silver. Uh, because it's gross. Yeah, no initials. Yeah. Uh, so battered wife, fish. Oh, okay. I I thought it was like fish, but they only got battered wives to cook it. I thought it was battered wife fish. That's what I heard him say. I don't have the best hearing. Yeah, okay. So that's why this... Yeah. We could, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, tipping is not only appreciated, it's mandatory. And it's most of the bill. You're not paying for the food. You're paying to help these battered wives. 
Yeah. And it's like, okay, you just want a soda? Great. That'll be $18. A soda. We don't do, like IHOP, we don't do refills on the sodas. So, so this week, it's not the Betty White Memorial Podcast segment brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends. No, it's T-B-W-M-P-S-B-T-Y-B-R-S-L-D-T, dead ass, no cap, blessing respectfully. Respectfully, bless it. So let's start off. Jeff, aka the Betty White Memorial Podcast segment, brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends. Download today with big news, huge news. This is huge news for me, but not just me. It's huge news for my family. It's huge news for for the fan base for the podcast. This is huge. This is breaking news. I'm announcing this right here on the podcast. Okay. Oh. No. Damn, now I'm gonna be disappointed in what you said. I have a cowboy hat now. A cowgirl hat. Really? No, no, this is the big news. This is the big news. I, I sometimes wear cowboy hats now. Really? What? That uh My dad is an alien, but he was a legal alien. You know, he got his citizenship. Uh, Bunny. And he doesn't have superpowers. Uh, he has super, super uh, ang anger powers. Yeah, I'm going to let it go. Bunny, uh, let's, let's get to a little bit of news. The words Weird Al and Pimp are usually not used in the same sentence. Well, yeah, obviously he has a he has a very hardcore fan base. It's really hard. Also. However, uh, I've got a story here that that might change everyone's mind. So, according to uh, Weird Al himself in a recent interview in the eighties, he was going on a lot of dates. You know, he was starting to make a name for himself, and he had money, and and. You know, he was trying to go on dates, trying to find Mrs. Yankovic. And he had a move, which is astounding. He would go up to the women and it's like, hi, how are you doing? I'm so excited for this date. Uh, yeah, my name is Al, Alfred Yankovic. Uh, I, I'm a bit of a singer, successful singer, got a few gold records. I go by Weird Al. But anyway, enough about me. Uh, how about we go get dinner in a movie? Have you seen The Naked Gun? You haven't seen The Naked Gun? Oh, it's a hilarious comedy. Let's go see it. So he would take numerous dates to go see The Naked Gun. And the dates don't know that Weird Al Yankovic is in the movie as himself. That is a pimp ass fucking move. That is a power move by Weird Al Yankovic. Like, damn, dude. Good for you. Holy shit. I, Weird Al Yankovic's a fucking pimp for that. Straight up fucking yeah. pimp. Weird Al Yankovic, fucking pimp. Uh, a whole, oh, we've got an interesting comment here by a fan. I would like to read it now for you. Hello, sorry for bothering you. I want to offer promotion for your channel, for viewers, followers, views, chatbots, etc. I am offering this to you because I have a very small penis. And also, I am 100% definitely actual an American human like you. Ha ha, LOL. Wow. Uh great a great message for our fans from our fans. Uh, probably in a room watching TV, watching uh, the tablet. Yeah. Uh Bunny. Yeah. No. 
No, uh, now the store is called uh, Sleepy, a Thanksgiving store. All the it so much wall to wall tryptophan and uh, uh, green bean casseroles as far as the eye can see. Yes, of course. Uh, oh, but hold on. Before we get to catching up, Bonnie, I have an impression. What? Thank you. Because a lot of people, I've been doing a lot of uh, live events lately, and a lot of people have told me that I'm a really funny stand-up comedian, but I'm not a stand-up. I'm a very funny storyteller, but I'm not a stand-up comedian. And if I am funny, that is entirely accidental. Uh, so, yeah, I'm not a stand-up comedian. I, maybe I'm a sit-down comedian. I'm really good at sitting and doing Mothra impressions. Very good at that. So so I, I said, okay, if I, if I can't be a hilarious stand-up comedian, like Dane Cook or Rob Schneider, then I've got to go somewhere else. And uh, so I've been trying to do impressions lately, and this is a really good one, and I think you're really going to like it, Bonnie. Are, are you ready? Okay. I'm, I'm really good at impressions. Wait, hold on. I'm really good at oddly specific impressions. So this is an impression of the weather app on your phone. Are you ready, Bunny? Are you ready? Okay. Hold on. Today is going to be sunny with a high of 67 degrees. Light breeze coming in from the north. And a high of 67 degrees. 10% chance of rain with a high of 67. It is currently 74 degrees. 10% chance of rain. Anyway, that's my impression. Yeah. I am going for a look right now, especially with these bangs. I'm going for a specific look that says, what if uh, Joey Ramone didn't suck dick for uh, uh, heroin money and just transitioned instead? That is the look that I'm going for. And I think I nailed it. Maylin Ramon. That was my name. I was electric tambourine for the Ramones for a year. But I had to leave because I just I just partied harder than they did. They couldn't handle their liquor. They couldn't handle their drugs. I I was too bad of an influence on that. I I didn't really leave. It was a conscious uncoupling. Yeah. So, Bunny, I see you're still alive. This is good. It is good that you are alive because I don't remember the episode, but uh, the episode where we talked about your possible cancer diagnosis. Not a dry eye. In the house. Amazing episode. I can't wait for us to win an award for it. Uh, and then a, a few episodes later, I came out with my health diagnosis. I've got that boom, boom, pow. Which I dare say is probably equally as important as your diagnosis. But anyway, uh, we had a good cry. It was very moving. So the fact that you're alive, this is very good. 
We're happy that you're alive, Bun Fur. <laughs> Okay, uh, so I've been busy. We haven't done an episode in a while, but uh, uh, now that it's closed, I feel like kind of comfortable. I was the full-time assistant store manager at uh, my, my small town's Halloween store. Big name Halloween store that will remain nameless. And yes, that is a giant killer clowns from outer space corrugated popcorn display behind me. Hooray! I'd like to think that it's worth some sort of money to someone who's very weird. It is really weird to, to work at a Halloween store and to have a killer clowns from outer space display and people come in and they know the movie and they've seen it and they love it and it's like when the hell did this shitty ass film become a super popular halloween film blow feeling yeah yeah it's freaking weird um so i i'm all done yesterday was my last day and, you know, I, I took part in inventory. And then uh, while we were doing the inventory, we were also boxing up all of the product, which then gets uh, sent back to the corporate office. And I think used again next year. Yeah. Like, yes. What is your question, honey? My wife? That's I, I think that's why sometimes we had things in the clearance section because they were things that were older that we just can't sell anymore. I also think that sometimes things just fall through the cracks that here's a license that we have for this year, but it didn't sell. So we're just going to use it next year and next year, which is how I bought a WandaVision costume. I look really good in it. If I haven't, do you think I have enough time to get into it during the break? Yeah. Okay. Then I'm. I, I will be uh, the scar Wanda Maximoff uh, in her traditional uh, Sokovian fortune teller outfit from WandaVision. It, I look really good in it. And now, yeah, I'm out of a job, but I, I really like impressed people and the district manager loves me. And I even met the regional manager and I had a real, I, I remember the pain of working at the bookstore for 18 years so much that I forget the fact that like, yeah, I was a manager. I was a big time manager and I did pretty good. And so I really wowed them at the Halloween store and the district manager loves me. She's going to come see me perform uh, at the end of this month at the 30th doing uh, my bizarre sit, sit down stand up comedy at a drag show in Ada, Oklahoma. There's ads occasionally flashing in between us here on the week. So, um, so they are 100% ready to hire me next year, which is exciting. So I've got a job lined up, not until August, but I've got a job lined up. Uh, the best part is, yeah, yeah. Here's the great part. I, uh, the last uh, three days that the store was open, I got I didn't get 80% off. I got 50% off. And then I got 30% off on top of that. But it wasn't 80% off. 
I got 50% off and then whatever that price was, I then got 30% off of that, which is not 80% off. But still, I, I got some things for pretty freaking cheap. And really happy about that. And now, uh, next month, because I was a manager, I get a big time bonus of a couple thousand dollars. Yeah. Not to mention the fact that at the end, I was making $19 an hour. So, it, yeah, this has been pretty successful for me, and I had a lot of fun. I've got a lot of shows coming up. Like I said, on November 30th in Ada, I will be performing at, uh, um, I think it's called East Central University. I, I'm performing in Ada, Oklahoma at a drag show. And it's going to be a whole bunch of fun. And then I've got a story time lined up for Pride Fest for Pride Month next year. In June, I will be performing at Frontier, Frontier City Theme Park. And I'm really excited about that. And then in August, I will be performing uh, story times at a drag show in Memphis, Tennessee. It's going to be like an Elvis themed drag show and I will be doing story times there. I don't really have any Elvis books. I imagine I, I'd get in trouble if I went to the Elvis themed drag show and said, hi, how are you doing? I'm Mei Lin. And today we're going to be reading a story about how Priscilla Presley, when he, she first started dating Elvis, was like freaking 12. And we're all fine. So I imagine I'd get in trouble for that. And then in October of next year, I'm doing a story time uh, uh, on Bourbon Street in uh, New Orleans. Yeah, I'm hoping that a rich-ass vampire turns me into his uh, gay sidekick. Because I heard that happens there. That's the only thing I know about New Orleans. It's where all the gay vampires are. Yeah. They made a documentary about it. Uh, starring a very sexy Antonio Banderas. And then last night, I performed at a gala awards event in downtown Oklahoma City called the Rainbow Awards. It was really bizarre because there's all these rich people. All of these business people and CEOs and like a woman from Channel 5 News was there and all of these business leaders and advocates and protesters and organizers and all of these cool gay people and then it's me and my wife's broke ass in our own private table in the back me wearing a cheap ass $20 dress I bought from Spirit Halloween and it's like, here are all of these people, all of these fancy schmancy people, like the Oklahoma City Ballet is here, a Grammy and Tony Award winning singer and actor is here, and then fucking me. I had big time imposter syndrome, but I rocked it last night at the event, and I'm really proud of myself, and afterwards, all of these people who took advantage of the free two drinks at the event uh were pretty wasted when they came to me uh crying talking about how much my performance meant to them and it, it was very surreal especially very specifically my story because my uh story time is centered around my transition uh into the beautiful woman that i am today so um yeah, people were coming up to me with just tears in their eyes talking about how much I meant to them. And it, it waking up this morning back in my dirty ass house in a small town in Oklahoma, I kind of feel like Cinderella a little bit, you know, that like I'm just a nobody who performed on stage with 
the touring company production of Hamilton's Aaron Burr. Yeah. No, no, yes. The house isn't a dirty ass house anymore. It's pretty damn clean. We have a new couch. It turns into a bed. Sweet. So, uh, will Bunny have to be the big spoon or the little spoon? Oh, okay. Cool. Uh, so, Bunny, let me tell you about the thing that I was talking with Natasha about be right before we went on the air. Uh, so, tomorrow, select AMC theaters are doing a thing that they've never done before called AMC Screen Unseen. And for $5, you get to see a, a movie that hasn't come out yet. The only thing is, you're not told what movie it is. It's like a movie blind box, but it's a movie that hasn't come out yet and that ha no one has seen. So you know nothing about it. Uh, but I have a number of uh, groups of uh, of fellow a uh, AMC A-list members, and we have deduced that it's either Taito Waititi's upcoming comedy Next Goal Wins, Taika Waititi's uh, uh, soccer comedy Next Goal Wins, or the fucking Marvels. Either way, I'd pay five, you know, I, I'd absolutely go to that. And also, I was going to say I'd pay $5 for that, but it's free because of my A list. I mean, I know we pay for it, but it's a free ticket. Yeah. So I, I'm kind of excited to do that tomorrow. Ten minute warning. I got, I said it this time. I feel good about that. Uh, I took you, my 18-year-old son, to go see Five Nights at Freddy's. And... Uh, Super, he still is super into that game. Super into the game. But here's the thing. Here's the here's the the review that I came up with. Bunny, you've seen the second Mortal Kombat live action movie, right? Well, it's shit. You've seen Street Fighter the movie. You haven't seen that with Jean-Claude Van Damme? That's a piece of shit. Okay, but you have seen that Yui Bowl video game movie where, what's his name? Uh, uh, Alone in the Dark? Alone in the Dark. We did it for our Summer of Bottoming where we saw movies for the IMDb. Yeah, so... Uh, most video game movies suck. Sonic the Hedgehog was kind of fun, but here's a line from Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Only Sonic the Hedgehog could have a dance battle that extreme. And a movie can't be considered good if it has that sort of dialogue. So the review I'm about to give Five Nights at Freddy's isn't a glowing review. But as far as video game movies go, this is a great review. Five Nights at Freddy's didn't suck. Was it a great movie? No. Would people who know nothing about the video game like it? I don't know. But it didn't suck ass. And as far as video game movies go, that's pretty all right. You know, is 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 a pretty fun movie. It's pretty fun. Willie's Wonderland is that what it was called? Um, that's basically a better version of Five Nights at Freddy's. 
because that movie that you saw was made to capitalize on Five Nights at Freddy's, but now they've made the Five Nights at Freddy's movie, and it, Nicolas Cage is just better. Nicolas Cage is just better. Uh, it was nice to see Matthew Lillard back in an in in like a horror movie. That was nice. I'll tell you, my seven year old and twelve year old fucking loved it, and and my uh, eighteen year old was was pretty like over the moon about it. it. It's it's a pretty good movie. It's a pretty good movie. And I kind of liked it. Uh, so this week we will be talking about the 1953 American science fiction film From Here to Eternity. Oh, wait. It came from outer space. It's all about Pennywise in space. It's like the Jason X of the It franchise. Yes, it has. Yeah, well, everybody knows that. Yeah. I'm giving the fans what they want down here. I'm really proud I grew these myself. No one. Nothing out there in the world can equal the feeling of joy that you get when you transition into a trans woman and an ex messages you wondering how you got boobs bigger than they have. That brings you such a joy. Oh, I bought a bunch of different things at 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 the Halloween at the Halloween store. This is my favorite coffee mug of all time. It's a laser gun with a handle, and it has the Mars Attacks logo inside. It is the coolest coffee mug of all time. It's a jetpack or whatever the aliens wear in the back. But here's the thing. If you sing Rosemary by Slim Whitman, the entire coffee mug just explodes into shrapnel. So you gotta you gotta watch out for that Slim Whitman music. Oh no, it's not Rosemary. What was the song? When I'm calling you. Ah, oh, I forgot the name of that song from Mars Attacks. I need to watch Mars Attacks again. I think the kids would like it. Yes, I think that's exactly what it's called, Indian Love Song. Yeah, you nailed it. Good job, Bunny. That movie was crazy. I haven't watched that in forever. I'm going to watch it again. So, we are going to talk about uh, film director Pedro Almodovar by watching a 1953 American by discussing a 1953 American science fiction film featuring um, my favorite staple of monster movies, Chiseled Jaw Guy with Pipe. A staple of 1950s and 60s monster movies. Well, yes, dear. I think we've got something strange on our hands. Yeah, that's in like every other monster movie. And I'm excited to talk about it. Uh, I think that another famous movie copied this one. Uh, but we'll get to that. And then, of course, as I've been doing, you know, for the past few episodes, I have a great bi biography of Pedro Almodovar. That this time is perfect with no mistakes, wink noise, touch notes. I probably shouldn't have written that out, but I did. Wink noise, touch nose. But, but.
before we get to any of that, maybe we should take a break. Should we take a break, Bonnie? Oh, no, it, no, it's just wink noise. Touch nose. That's what it says here. That's 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 what I wrote down. But should we take a break, Bunny? Okay, good. Well, I I have a big costume change, Bunny. You think we can manage? Okay. All right. Yeah. So, uh, very excited about this costume change. Uh, trans Hispanic Wanda Maximoff will be appearing. I have a lot. I have some superhero costumes, but they're all dudes. You know, I can get away with that now because of the multiverse. But at this point, the multiverse kind of sounds like a like a like a cheap ploy, you know? But anyway, in, in Mei Lin's multiverse, uh, there's a lot of Steve's. Not a lot of Mei Lin. So uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm the exclusive variant edition of the comic book that is my life. Most people have the, the, news, the, the newsstand cover. But I'm the special limited edition gold variant with a hologram. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, Bonnie. And then uh, if I spend enough time on uh, hormones, I will get to my final form. Crocodile.